listen, man's is on a mission. Dial it to him, really, yeah, I'm pushing on my chips in. What's up, y'all? Welcome to Behind This Beat, brought to you by Beat This Philippines. My name is Nico Blitz, and today we are taking you all the way to Arizona. My boy, Wolf Town. What's up, bro? What's going on, Nico? Pleasure to be here. Yeah, likewise. Pleasure to have you, bro. Might I just say, like, the lighting in your room and everything is phenomenal, bro. Bro, this is just actually this corner of my room. <laughs> I have to, like, <laughs> look, look, it's, I don't really have nothing on my, as I'm very minimalistic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, let me, let me make it, uh, let, you know, uh, the ambient a little different. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, aesthetic. It, I'm hey, a it's ring a vibe, bro. It's a vibe. That's all I really gotta say. What's also a vibe, by the way, is your new record DND. It is out right now. Yes, uh, sir. just dropped a couple weeks ago, man. How you feeling about the record? I love it. I mean, this is one of my favorite records. I actually produced that as well, and it's just I I had a really good time and so much fun just doing that song, and it's one of my most. Uh, creative i guess and yeah, freeing man. type of uh track i've released and yes yeah, it's a new direction that I'm, I'm going with my music so i'm oh, really yeah. excited that it's out and everybody can enjoy so peep that and share with everybody share with your mamas <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah bro um freeing in what sense because that's a very uh it's a very specific term um like creatively i think mm -hmm. for me I've always been, um, I mean, I, I'm still going through it, like figuring out what my artistic vision is and also <laughs> like what I want to put out as an artist and what I want people to hear me uh, sound like. So I guess like, like yeah, my, my direction in music, like my sound and everything. So I'm like, I, I've been experimenting with a lot, a lot of beats and lyrics and patterns. And finally, I'm like, this really sounds like me. This sounds oh, yeah. like what I want to like keep making and like I can listen to this over and over and i don't get sick of it you know because oh yeah i think it's an, that's how it's got to be like you got to love what you got to even what you put out and you really have to believe in what you're putting out otherwise it's, what is it for like you're just you can't just pump out music unless that's what you that's just what you what you want to do you know just keep pumping out music and you know it's disposable to you but but to me um i don't look at it that way i you know, give a piece of myself with my music and I always try to stay true and authentic to me. So yeah, yeah. this D&D is, is one of those songs, man. And yeah, yeah, it's it's dope. It's dope. I love that, bro. I love that. Well, y'all, D&D is out right now, but Wolf Town, man, I want to go all the way back to the beginning, bro. Like how long have you been doing music? When did you start? Oh man, so I started when I was in middle school. So about over... 10 years now okay i've been making music and i fell in love with it every every chance i get to be in a studio because in middle school my homie had the whole setup the whole gear and i found about like fo studio and how to produce and how to record and back then i was writing like dr seuss rhymes and like you know <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't as you know looking back i wasn't as great now at writing but man i just kept with it and the passion just kept growing the fire kept growing and the desire to like make this a career um just keep going kept, kept going up and here i am like i'm at beat this and <laughs> probably oh, yeah. the nico blitz and it's just you know uh i think the more the more you do um and practice and and just follow chase your dreams it's inevitable that you will find success so like, I just oh, never yeah, man. A thousand oh. percent. I mean, you've been going at it for 10 years nonstop. The singles have been dropping. Um, one of my favorite singles, actually, uh, Falling. And, <laughs> you know, specifically because it's very rare that I hear, um, you know, switch ups in languages when uh, it comes to like Filipino artists, right? Like, I listen to a lot of reggaeton, I listen to a lot of Spanish music. So there's a lot of like switch ups between like English and Spanish in these songs. But Falling, um, if I'm not mistaken, is like at least one of those few songs where I hear a switch up between like um, English and Ilocos. And so yeah. like I kind of wanted to get like your thought process on the direction of like why you even did that. Um, I just wanted to make a bop, to be honest. <laughs> and oh, yeah. and I obviously like being Filipino, I 
I've always carried that with me. It's it's who I it's part of my identity. So uh, I just wanted to make a really cool island bob, put my language and my roots in there and just have people just come around and, and vibe to it and enjoy it. And that's really what my vision was like, dang, like I just want people to dance and, and feel oh. something and feel good. And and this was one of those songs that uh, this came out and and uh, uh, I was actually making this song while my, my girl <laughs> was on FaceTime with me. And I was like, OK. <laughs> You, you're my muse right now. I got you. <laughs> and yeah. it just kind of just happened that way. And it was, it was magic. <laughs> that, I'm, hey, man, that's dope, bro. I mean, like I said, it's it's one of my favorite records, especially because of the switch up. And like, you know, it, it was one of those things where like, you know, I feel like if people don't look at you or don't see you, they can't really tell you're Filipino. But then once you hear the song, it's like, oh, this guy's Filipino. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny you say that because even with my raps, like just random people that mm-hmm. listen to my music and and they, they they tell me that like you don't sound like the way you look because you look yeah. just like a kid. <laughs> <You're so laughs> bad. And then they hear me rap and it's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah. Where did that come from? It's another person. That's funny, bro. And you've been getting that your whole life, huh? Yes. <laughs> I'm 28 now. I'm still getting that, bro. <laughs> Hey man, I I totally feel it. I was just chopping up with my boy PJ Butter and his voice. He's also Filipino, but his voice is like so deep, bro, that you couldn't even tell he's Filipino. But that's, that's sick, hilarious. man. I mean, you've been pursuing this thing for like ten years now. Yes. And so, like, what was like your first introduction, like in middle school? Like, what what even sparked the idea? Um, I got in high school, what well, middle school and in high school actually where it happened. Mm-hmm. For a group of my friends, uh, shout out St. Pierre. We formed this like rap group named Fame Game. It was okay. <laughs> shout out Fame was, Game. I see yeah, y'all. Fame Game, man. <laughs> I'm taking it back, but yeah, we were just like three three homies just rapping and and making beats and and um, doing like talent shows and stuff like that. And we got actually he got put on by like some uh, some artists. And he was opening up for him and we went to the studio one time and I got to experience for the first time what it was like being in, in the studio with a bunch of, you know, potheads, one. <laughs> <laughs> you need the potheads, bro. You yeah, need the potheads. Otherwise, it's not a second. Like, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was an experience for me being like 14 years old. Like, dang, this is how it is. And everybody just like freestyling and just making beats and just giving us free game and that was kind of like where it all started for me like damn like this could be a possibility for for me in the future like if i just kept pursuing it and i loved this so much that was i think that's number one like i just fell in love with it i just fell in love with the music i fell in love with writing i fell in love with the process of everything production mixing mastering engineering and that's never gone away like that's the, i always try to like bring back bring that back um to my why and yeah. that's my why like I, I love music and i don't think love i'll that. ever stop and that's why i'm still here i'm still doing this <laughs> no and i love that bro because i think the first thing is really just like loving what you do right and Absolutely. i apply this to like literally anything like you could be i mean in a filipino sense you could be like a doctor you can be a lawyer and i would never knock that But for me, I could only knock it if it's something that you don't absolutely love. Yes. Right. And so it's like I talk to a lot of creative people and more than half the time they actually love what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And the unfortunate part is like, especially when it comes to people in our community, the Filipino community, like more times I'll ask them like, hey, you know, like, do you love what you do? It's like, oh, you know, it's just it's getting me by. It's paying the bills. And I'm just like, bro, like at least for me that's not the way to live life right you know right i just feel like it's very difficult for me or even like you right to go through the day-to-day routine of a facade of like yeah i don't really like this but it's doing what you know it's it's getting me some bread it's doing this it's yes. doing that but it's it's hard to actually live with that at least for yes. me you know i think every artist goes through that and are is going through that like i for me yeah like i I have a nine to five you know i you you have to survive as well you have to put Mm -hmm. food on the table um if if music isn't doing it for you at the moment but like 
you know, you you just leverage yourself with what you got. And that's just how I look at it. Like this job hey. that I have, you know, I'm in the medical field, but I'm not a there nurse. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a nurse. Uh, are you make, you're making the medical money. I see you, bro. <laughs> Yo, no. Yeah, I've, I've went through that route and finally uh, just kind of found my calling and, and really accepted that this is... Um, or kind of became clear, clear to me that this is really what I want to do. Hell yeah. And I'm, I'm 100% pursuing it. And there's nothing that's going to stop me but me from, you know, accomplishing my goals. Uh, not even my mom and my dad telling me to go, go back to school or nursery school, go yeah. back to the Philippines and study there. And I was like, you know, that's not really what mm. I want to do. And you don't, it's, you're only doing this disservice to your soul, to mm. yourself. If you don't, pursue what your heart wants and what your heart fully desires so you're just gonna end up regretting it as you when you get older and you look back like dang i should have done this you know and yeah honestly i'm in i had the mentality of what i what do i have to lose if you know i just do this 100 percent i i take a leap of faith you know it's if i fail i fail and i fail fast and i'm gonna keep going that's just mm. how life is you know you 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 are what 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 is my mj say? Uh, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, and Hell that's yeah. very true. And you know, I'm shooting for the moon, but you know, um, for you to even hit the moon, you got to keep shooting. So, like, you know what I'm I saying? Like, yeah, no, nah, I love just, it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just got to keep keep trying, even if um, it gets hard. Um, but that's just that's just life. Life is hard, and and you just got to keep pushing and never give up, never quit. Yeah, I hear you. When when did you say you started to go um 100% just full force going into music? I think after um high school and I got uh more opportunities with like performing um and again all these like opportunities just here locally too and and also like social media uh people were like just resonating with my music and actually like whoa, people are listening to me. Uh, people like my stuff so that kind of motivated me to keep keep working and um yeah like i that's really it like people and the support group i have my friends and family who just support me and and tell me hey, you, you're good you're great like keep keep doing keep doing what you're doing and never stop because you're talented you're good enough you have what it takes and I'm very grateful for them, for the people who've been with me, um, holding me down and just supporting me along the way. And that's that's really like the main reason why I keep doing this. And hell yeah. And yeah, man. I love that, man. Um, for you, like what inspired the name Wolf Town? Wolf Town is actually um, my real name, but broken down. So Wolf Town, my real name is Okay, my government, Ralston. <laughs> Ralston, and, okay, yes. okay. And um, so I, I, I tell the story all the time. <laughs> Let's get it, man. Let's get it. So R-A-L, if you break it down, it's um, like Norse god. It's like Nordic for god of wolves. You can fact check me. I don't care. Okay, if okay. It's, if, it's, if it's that accurate, whatever, I still love it. <laughs> but... <laughs> And my coworker actually broke this out for me because she loved names. And so she said, yeah, your R-A-L is Raul. And then it uh, translates to Radul, which is like Nor uh, Norse god of god of the wolves. So I was like, okay, that's cool. So wolves. And then uh, T-O-N, she said it was like old English for town. So, okay, I took that. And the S is just stands for uh, sexy. I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I just put that, those two together, and uh, yeah, I was like, Wolf Town, that's dope. Um, I kind of like that. That's kind of cool. Um, and I have even have it tatted on my uh, my forearm over here in Bye Bye In. This last Bye year. Bye. Okay. Yeah. So, that's what's up, bro. <laughs> Any reason why you dropped the O in Wolf? Ah, no reason. Yeah, I just thought, you know, one less uh, <laughs> on the syllable. <laughs> <laughs> one less uh one, one less, less syllable letter. to worry about huh <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's hella funny that's cool 
You know, it, it's funny uh, that uh, you just showed me that tattoo because down my spine, I actually have um, uh, Alibata tattoo that says family. That's what's so up. So it looks very similar to what you have. Really? Yeah. That's it deep. looks very similar. <laughs> But obviously, you know, different um different dialect or different like manuscript, I guess. Yeah. Um have you been back to the Philippines at all? I went back last year uh for about two months and I Damn, actually did, that was a yeah. while, bro. Yeah, 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 it was a lot. But man, I, I I wish I was still there. I enjoyed every minute of it and I actually got the chance to do some shows with Beat This and uh open up for uh, Zakari over there. Hell on yeah. TDE, um, and it was just a blast, man. It was a blast. Like I would do that thing all over again. Yeah. Did you go back to your hometown or? Yes. Yeah, so I'm from Lawag. Lawag City is in the Locos Norte. That's all the way up to the top. Yeah. And you uh, up there, bro? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I spent majority of my time there, and then the latter stages of the trip, I was in um, Manila. We went to Cebu, Bacolod, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much majority of the trip oh man you've been yeah. everywhere in the philippines man it see cool, for me man. bro i just go back to batangas and then i'm back to manila then i just went to Zabu, and that's it like that's what's up bro i want to vi- i want to visit so many parts of the philippines bro yeah yeah me too man me too i want to tour the whole country that would be amazing yeah um what's it like in your hometown and was that the first time you were back there no no um we try to go go back every two years but since it was a pandemic it would you know stretch to like three almost four yeah so yeah um that was our first time back since 2020 actually no yeah yeah three years 2020 before the pandemic happened we just left since like before everything shut down it was so close Okay, it was so okay. close. You know, good thing you did that because if you guys, um, if you guys had stayed for like an extra couple of weeks or whatever, like you guys would have been stuck there for yeah. a bit. Bro, yeah. my grandparents were stuck there for like an extra like, like four or five months, and they hated oh it. They oh hated it. God, because they always come back. They leave like in November, and then they're there till February, just to mm-hmm. avoid all, just to get the best weather and avoid the summer rain. Wow. Yeah. Dang, and you know, they're old, so once the rain yeah. hit, they're just like, oh, they're fucking miserable, bro. <laughs> <laughs> this is- yeah, man, the rain the rain was nice though. Like, I mean, this is really rain here as much in Arizona. So I was like enjoying yeah. the rain. Um, but when we went, it was super hot. It yeah. was it was like ridiculously hot. Um, yeah. But uh Lawag, Lawag City where I'm from, it's a very chill city. Uh, it's growing. There's a lot of like businesses growing. Uh, they're mm-hmm. booming. I mean, there's like Robinsons there now. They're building yeah. an SM. They're building, building, and they're building everything in in my city. But I think it's still very much. Um, it's still it's still a small city. Everybody knows each other. Yeah, you know, it's it's like still the province type of thing. But it's yeah. just definitely booming. Yeah. And were you born in Luwag City? Yes. Yes. Oh, I was that's born- dope. Yeah, I was born there, and then I came to the states when I was ten, so oh mm-hmm. six. Oh shoot! So you're like you're like really from there. <laughs> you like I, you like saw everything over there when you were like up until so, ten. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Majority of, of my life is here now, but like yeah, um, I still. That's why I'm still very much rooted. I still know how to speak uh, Ilocano, Tagalog, and yeah, that's. I, I try to keep keep up with that. I, I try not to forget because my, my dad will beat, I'll beat my ass, man. <laughs> oh, bro, believe me. Like, my parents regret not... T- I mean, I even regret my parents not teaching me Tagalog or at least me not, like, trying to learn so much when I was younger, right? Yeah. Because now with just so many Filipino creatives and, like, this thing where it's, like, super cool to be Filipino now, like, I just wish I learned a lot more Tagalog. And it's yeah. crazy, right? Like, I feel like you and I, both being Filipino, um, we do come from, like, a little bit of, like, similar but also different backgrounds. Because, you know, I was born here. Yeah. So I'm more, like, Filipino-Americanized with the way I grew up. For you, which, you know, I am frankly jealous about that you were born in the Philippines and you were able to soak up, like, actual culture up until you were 10. And then you were able to take that culture and, like, bring it here but also as if it's like something that's not even like brand new to you 
Mm. And what's cool is that, you know, now that like I'm in my 30s or even when I hit like my late 20s, I was like, man, like I want to go back and just learn so much about like my people and my culture. And I feel like, you know, now that we're getting older, this is just the best time to even do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is so it's a it's a blessing, though. Like, uh, I'm, I think it's I'm very fortunate to have kind of best the best of both worlds but at the same time it's also still a struggle because like it's that whole identity thing too like Mm. am i more american now because i've lived here longer or am i still uh like still from there from there from Mm. there you know what i mean so like i i've to me it's it's just the whole the whole diaspora of being filipino man like it's 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 a beautiful thing and we should there's this like i don't know if you saw on tiktok like they were debating like oh you're not filipino enough because you don't this and that uh but i think we should just eradicate that whole narrative and just be proud of of who we are as individuals and as filipinos just come together as as one because there's no reason for us to be you know comparing or like um thinking who's better uh because you know uh because we're not from there yeah there's differences but that's just how it is there, there's there is going to be differences there is going to be differences in cultures but at the end of the day we're still from like rooted in the motherland we're we're still filipino and we're still repping that shit you know like that's what that's what matters that's all that matters man <laughs> yeah i mean it, it truthfully is bro i mean I, I it was just funny because um you know I was just talking to, um, I was talking about my boy, uh, Guap Dad 4000 the other day. And, um, someone had asked me like, oh, you know, like, what are your thoughts about like, you know, someone being like black and Filipino. And I'm just like, first of all, there's times where I feel Guap Dad is way more Filipino than I am. Like this fool, he'll be talking into Tagalog, he'll be wearing a barong. And I'm just like, bro, like you're more Filipino than me right now, dog. Like, and so yeah. for me, it's like. You know, I feel like Filipinos, well, you know, at least Filipinos in my circle, like we champion, even if like you're not full Filipino, it's like if Guap's Filipino, it's like dope. Like, I don't, I don't see you as like black and Filipino. I just see you as like a Filipino guy, you know? Yeah. Or it's like, you know, and even going back to that debate that you were mentioning, um, it's tough, man. It's tough, especially being on like this side of the world Mm. and seeing that there is this there's this disparity between filipino americans and people who are actually from the philippines because Mm -hmm. i firmly believe that you know filipinos whether you are in america or even the uk or even like australia like all of those hyphenated portions of whatever filipino you are like that is just part of the um overall narrative of the philippines yeah you know because a lot of them if not like most like they want to get out of the philippines and go to a different country to quote unquote like better their lives and better the lives for their family so like it's just crazy to me how like people specific people can knock other portions of filipinos like from around the world it's it's really insane bro it's really insane yeah i mean and i don't mean to get like hella political or anything on this podcast but you know it's just something that's always on my mind dog bro that's real though we got to keep it real you just got to say how it is Mm -hmm. yeah i i believe that man and you know you you said it best like it's part of the filipino narrative and Mm. it's just a sad reality but you know one day the philippines will hopefully get better like you know economically that way there's not a lot of people will be, will be separated from their families you know just mm. give them a better life but you know it's, it's just the way it is right now in the philippines it's just um not much really what we can do at the moment but i know we can do more <laughs> yeah 
Well, I think like one thing that you're doing, honestly, is you are paving a way for other Filipino artists to continue this legacy of like entertainment for Filipinos, whether they're from the Philippines or just like Filipino Americans, right? Like um, the reason why I love talking to people like yourself and Filipinos from around the world is because like you guys are ballsy enough to do something that is just out of the ordinary for you know our culture right but also not at the same time because we love karaoke we love <laughs> we love entertaining right yeah Bro, i remember when i was a kid like my um my lola and like all my aunties and whatnot they would pay me like a couple dollars just to sing and dance for them like in the <laughs> living room like yeah and so we are full born like entertainers right and Absolutely. we love to be entertained so you know, I just want to give you your flowers because like it's it's very brave of what you're doing. And I'm just so happy to see you like do what you do on a consistent basis. Thank you, man. Likewise, man, I've been a fan of you since like the day I found you on Instagram. You're doing your DJ stuff. Now you're doing music and, yeah. and production. That's what's up, man. Like, congrats to you. I know you got your single just came out and actually <laughs> and it's it's. Yeah, man. Like, that's dope. That's dope. Thank you, bro. what you're doing, man. And I always look up to you. I've been looking up to you. I love the podcast that you do and the game that you give and the, the, uh, just, you're doing the same thing too. Just, just the representation that we need in, in, uh, in America as Filipinos and, and just globally too. Like you're bringing global Filipinos together as well. Yeah, well, I mean, it's all about unity, right? Like, right. I feel like our culture is way beyond just simply being in the Philippines. Yeah. I remember over the pandemic, like, you know, I was DJing on Twitch and the amount of Filipino DJs from around the world, bro. And I'm talking about Australia. I'm talking about the UK. I'm talking about like here in Los Angeles by itself or California at that I was like, bro, like, I didn't know we were all over the damn place like this. <laughs> like, this is kind of nuts, bro. And so, you know, for me, it's always been a goal to just bring together as many Filipino creatives as possible because at the end of the day, we're going to support each other because, I mean, A, because what we're doing is dope. Yeah. Or at least that's the hope that what yeah. we're doing is dope, right? <laughs> yeah. And B, on like a Filipino aspect, it's like the only people who are really going to champion you are your own people. So we need to continue to, um, you know, live that way and support other Filipino creatives, artists, and whatever you want to call it, you know? I agree, man. I agree. He said it best. He said it best. And like, this, that's kind of like what I'm trying to do here in Arizona as well, to just like bring the community together here um, and, and through my music and uh, through my group, Bali Song, Bali Song Music, uh, we're this Filipino duo that just rap about our culture and and, and, oh, yeah. and bring that angas and, and that that flavor to, to hip hop. And we do it through dance as well. And and yeah man like it's it's been a, a cool ride and just it's cool to see um people resonating with us here in in arizona which we have such a small community but there's so much potential to grow and i'm so blessed to be a part of it and pioneering that for uh filipinos filipino americans and hopefully i i inspire other filipinos here in, in the states and who are, who are pursuing the same thing, trying to do the same thing and making an impact in the community. So that's just, yeah, bro. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, that's Wolf Town, everybody. Wolf Town all the way from AZ, man. DND, once again, that is out right now. So make sure you check that on all streaming platforms. Uh, Wolf Town, where else can the people find you, my friend? You can find me anywhere on social media, TikTok, Instagram. I also have my website, www.wolftownmusic.com. Let me hit you with the www too. Hey, Come on, man. Let's get it. I'm we surprised you can say HTTPS colon slash slash. <laughs> Come Yo, on, now. You know, we professionals out here. <laughs> we, we... <laughs> oh, man. Well, shoot. Well, once again, y'all, this is Behind This Beat, brought to you by Beat This Philippines. My name is Nico Blitz. Shout out my guy, Wolf Town, and we are out, everybody. Peace. Thank you, guys.